in that gospel, uh, Jesus catches the disciples arguing among themselves, like a bunch of little kids. You know, like a mother would catch her children arguing about something, and she would come in and say, what are you kids doing? Nothing. Oh, okay. But they were embarrassed. They were embarrassed because Jesus just talked about his own death and how he was going to surrender his life in service to them and to us. And here they are arguing about who's the most important. You know, all of us struggle, I think, with self-esteem. All of us want to feel good about ourselves, and we should. But unfortunately, we try to gain self-esteem by thinking that we might be better than others. I think we can all got, get caught up in gossip. You know, you start talking about somebody and talking about their faults. And somehow I think when we do that, we're unconsciously at least putting ourselves above them. There were a group of Jesuits uh, together out at Hayden Lake. We have a villa, we call it a villa at Hayden Lake in Idaho. And they were sitting around the, uh, the dock there and somehow the conversation got focused on another Jesuit who obviously had his own struggles. And the conversation, you know, kept going and going. And there was one Jesuit there who didn't say anything until finally he said, you know, I wish you wouldn't talk about my friend that way. Could we talk about something else? What courage, what courage that took. He was identifying himself with his friend. And so we should think about that whenever we're tempted to talk about others. And actually, when we're tempted to do that, it's often a sign of insecurity because we're struggling in our own hearts how we feel about ourselves. In that letter uh, of James that we just heard, he says, where, where do the wars, where do the conflicts come from? Is it not our own passions that wage war within us and among us? It is. It's the war that goes on within ourselves. It's the inner conflicts that we end up projecting out onto others. That's how wars begin. Projection. The enemy out there. But you know, the enemy's in here. That's the one that I need to be reconciled with. That's the one that I need to be at peace with. Wars may be fought on the battlefield, but they begin in our hearts. And Jesus is trying to teach that. Jesus is the teacher that we want to imitate. And Jesus taught not just by words, by his words, but he taught by the way he lived his life. He lived his life in service and in humility. And that's why he takes a child and says, this, this is what you need to become. And this is who I am. You know, Jesus' own passion and death came about because of our projection onto him of our self-contempt, our self-hatred. The passion in our own hearts was projected onto Jesus, and he was willing to take our projection, to open his arms, to take on our sinfulness, in order to mirror back to us what we do to ourselves. Jesus became the Lamb of God who was willing to be sacrificed, the identified criminal. Jesus loved us that much that he wanted to show us on the cross God's mercy 
and God's love that we need to receive into our own hearts. And that's what we're being called to teach. We're being called to teach the life of Jesus. All of us are catechists. All of us are called to this ministry of catechesis. So let us take just a moment to reflect on the ways in which we are called. And then we'll receive a blessing that will mission us to carry that out this year.